Good morning, Tabernacle family and friends, and thank you for joining us on this great Sunday morning. We're so glad to be able to come together over these airwaves during this pandemic. We know that this too shall pass, and while we're not able to be together in the sanctuary, we know that we're still together in the spirit, and while the sanctuary is closed, we know that the church is still active. Why? Because we are the church, the people of God, are the church. So whatever we were doing here in the sanctuary, we're able to continue to do outside of the sanctuary. We're, continue, we're still able to lift up holy hands and magnify the name of the Lord. We're still able to give him praise and glory and honor. We're still able to bow our heads in prayer. We're still able to serve the Lord with gladness by helping others uh, during this time of the pandemic uh, conditions we have in the city and the nation. We're also able to continue to give uh, as unto the Lord uh, and, and with our tithes and offerings. And uh, we want to encourage you, while we're not able to be together in the sanctuary to collect the tithes and offerings, we pray that God will continue to put it on your heart to continue to do the work of the Lord and bring the tithes uh, into his house. As he says, he would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings we won't have room enough to receive. And so we, we pray that you would continue to uh, maintain your faith and faithfulness in giving. For we have a number of ways that you can continue to give in our absence. First, we want you to know that, of course, you can always go online on our website, tbicjax, J-A-X, uh, tbicjax.com. And on the home page, you'll see a Give Now button. You can also use the Givelify app. Uh, you can also use the uh, Cash app, uh, mobile app, which is Tabernacle, uh, our, our identification on Cash app is the dollar sign and T-B-I-C Jax, J-A-X, and uh, also on Ven Venmo, you can give by giving at the at sign, T-B-I-C Jax. Uh, as well as those of you who have ch church offering envelopes, we wanna remind you that those envelopes, those offering envelopes are able, you're able to mail them directly through the mail. You don't have to put the offering envelope in another envelope. Just put your return address upon it and put your information on it and put your check or money inside of it uh, and put it in the mail with a stamp. Uh, we encourage our members not to send cash through the mail uh, because we know that uh, cash can uh, be a challenge for the mail system. And then lastly, if you have a church offering envelope or a plain envelope and you're in the area of the church, you can stop by any day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and drop your envelope into our uh, lock box, uh, mailbox uh, just outside the admin building door. Uh, because once you put it in, you're not able to get it out until we retrieve it with the lock key. So there are a number of ways you can give. And we encourage you right now while you're listening to go to tbicjacks.com and give uh, to continue to support the work of the Lord. We still have our financial obligations, uh, even though we're not together. And we just thank God for your faith and your faithfulness as you have, con have and shall continue to give. For there is a word from the Lord today uh, and mindful, mindful of all that we're going through as a, uh, as a city, as a nation, as a church. Uh, so many changes, so many challenges, and so many choices we're having to deal with. Uh, we wanna continue to pray our strength in the Lord as we are dealing with them. Uh, individually and collectively and uh, in dealing with them in our uh, different ways at different times for we know we're all impacted by these changes in some way shape or form and it might not be the same for you as it is for another but we are all impacted and I so I want to give uh, a word from the Lord uh, to help us uh, during these times I want to draw your attention to the book of James James chapter 1 is our text uh, today. Our text will come from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. James in the New Testament chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. For hear what the word of God says in beginning at verse 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be per perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If anyone, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. The last verse says, for let no man, so let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. I want to preach this morning and sermonize this text with the thought in mind, when life gives you lemons and you don't want lemonade. When life gives you lemons and you don't want lemonade. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, as we come to you together in spirit and in truth, we worship you, we magnify your name, we seek the help of your Holy Spirit to bring divine understanding, divine revelation uh, from this text and from this message. We pray, O oh God, that you would open our minds, our hearts, our ears, and our spirit that we might receive, O oh God, what you would have us to receive from on high. I pray, God, now that you would decrease me and increase your spirit within me, that those who will watch and listen will see less and less of me and more and more of thee. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. I pray now, God, that you, uh, your spirit will fall fresh upon those who are listening, those who shall listen in the days ahead. For we need, O oh God, we need a word from on high. So feed us, O oh God. Feed our spirit, feed our faith, and feed us till we want no more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, that was a New King James Version. Another version puts it this way. The New Revised Standard says, My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. I want to preach this morning with a thought in mind, when life gives you lemons and you don't want lemonade. When life gives you lemons and you don't want lemonade. Brothers and sisters, we all know that we're living in some uh, unusual times. Times of new changes and challenges and choices that have impacted all of us with this pandemic. Everybody has been touched in some way. Every person, every household, every family, every church, every organization, every government agency has been touched, every city, every state. We all have been impacted by this pandemic. And while things have happened and things have changed, things are still changing even right now. And the days ahead promises even more changes as we move forward. And for some, we found ourselves dealing with some things we didn't want to deal with, dealing with some things we didn't ask for, dealing with some things we didn't, uh, what was not on our list. We don't want it. We didn't ask for it. But yet we have been given it. And therefore, we come to this old saying, when life gives you lemons, you've heard it, what? Make lemonade. Yes, when life hands you lemons, we've heard that old saying, make lemonade. Lemonade. It, it, it represents uh, the lemon represents something negative. It represents that which is bitter, that which you don't enjoy. It represents uh, difficulties. It is when that when that pro pro proverbial saying is mentioned, it is in design to encourage those who are having hardships. Encourage those who are going through a difficult time, encouraging those who are having to deal with something they don't want to deal with. Uh, it is encouraging them to remain optimistic and hopeful with the idea that this, too, can be turned around. See, making lemonade refers to turning that negative situation into a positive one. Turning that bitter situation into something sweet. And every trial, every situation that we're facing, that we shall face, if you turn to this text, you might find some helpful instructions on how to make lemonade out of your lemons. But what happens when life gives you lemons and you don't want to make lemonade? Well, pastor, well, I, I, brother, sister, I'm glad you asked. Because you need to know your options because I recognize there are some people out there who've been thrown some lemons and they don't want to make lemonade. 
The state of mind they're in, they don't want, they don't feel like making lemonade. They don't feel like uh, uh, turning it in. It, it, in essence, they come to a place where they just don't want to hear anything like that. And so the question is asked, what happens when life gives you lemons and you don't want lemonade? Well, I'm glad you asked because you need to know your options because you got three options if you don't want to make lemonade. The first option is you can sit there where you are and continue to blame other people for your circumstances. Blame them for uh, blame the government, blame the president, blame your boss, blame the economy, blame the white people, blame the black, whomever you want to blame. Blame your ex, blame your children, blame your parents, whomever you want to blame. But look, they're still your lemons. And though you may blame somebody else, when it comes to lemons in our lives, we can't pass them on to somebody else. We can't give them to somebody else to deal with. They're our lemons. They're our trials. They're our situation that we must deal with. And so your first option is to blame other people. But know this, they still remain your limits. If sickness is your limit in life, can't nobody else be sick for you. You've got to deal with it for yourself. And so you can blame other people, but know that uh, uh, with this option, the, the limits stay in your lap. So you can sit there with them if you choose. The second option, if you don't want to just blame somebody, the second option is you can take your lemons and suck on them just as they are and let them make you look bitter and let them make you become bitter because that's what happens to people who don't know how to turn lemons into lemonade. They just end up sucking on their lemons, going through life, letting trials and tribulations turn them from being sweet to bitter, turn them into looking like they're bitter. You've seen people who suck on lemons, their face ball up. Well, some people are are walking through this life because they're sucking on the uh, lemons and they become bitter and they look bitter. You see them when they come in. They look bitter when they come into the life. They look bitter when they come in your presence. They talk bitter. They, 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 they talk like they got a chip on their shoulder. Talk like somebody owed them something. Talk like they're the only one going through something. Well, baby, get in line. You're not the first one to get some lemons thrown in your lap. You're not the last one to get some lemons thrown in your lap. You need to understand we all get lemons in our lives. We all have trials in this life. And so, brothers and sisters, when it comes to lemons, you can just suck on them and become bitter and look bitter in life. If you don't feel like making lemonade. Your third option is you can let your lemons turn sour. Mm -hmm. You can see bitter is one thing to have a lemon that's bitter. You can make it into lemonade, but having a lemon that's turned sour, that's worse than a bitter, bitter lemon. And so what I'm saying is uh, when you're going through your trials, when you get when you're given a basket of lemons, you can sit there and let them turn sour. You can let it go from bad to worse. You can let it go from sour to uh, from bitter to sour. What are you saying? You can sit there and deny you got a problem, deny you got an issue. You can hide from your issues. You can hide from your trials. You can try escaping from your trials. Uh, but listen, you can run in fear or you can face everything and rise above what you're dealing with. Tell somebody, don't, 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 let, your sim don't let your limits turn sour on you. Because sour is worse than it is bitter. In essence, you might be going through something now, but you can Watch it get worse. You can watch it turn from bitter to sour. So, so brothers and sisters, you, you will find that when life gives you lemons, uh, the old saying of make lemonade, it, it, it is something we can take to heart. It, and truth be told, it might be easier said than done. But the basic philosophy is still solid advice. When, when life gives you trials, when life gives you lemons, listen, look at the idea of making Lemonade. You know, in fact, throughout the whole Bible, you will find that there are a number of people who were given lemons in their lives. There were a number of people who, who were thrown. They, they didn't ask for it. They were just given. Jo Listen, Joseph was thrown a basket of lemons in his life. Jesus was given a basket of lemons in his life. Moses was given a basket of lemons in his life. But throughout the Bible, you will find that those who were given uh, uh, situations like that, there are a number of people who turn their limits into lemonade, turn their defeat into victory, turn their failure into success, turn their situation from being victims to becoming victorious. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that we've got a choice. 
And you and I can do the very same thing with, with, with the help of the Lord and the help of this text. We, too, can turn our defeat into victory. We, too, can turn our trials in, into triumph. If you want to make the best out of the worst situation, if you want to make uh, if you want to triumph in your troubles or triumph in your trials, I, I want to encourage you to look at this text. As we preach it together, look at James chapter one, for he tells us that you and I can have the same turning experience. Uh, even today, we can turn our lemons into lemonade. We can turn our trials into triumphs. The key to turning our trials into triumphs is to follow the four directives he gives in this text. James gives four directives for you and I. If you want to turn your situation around, if you want to really make lemons out of your lemonade, you, you, you turn to this text in James chapter 1. Because he gives four directives that when followed all together, I believe you'll make some of the sweetest lemonade you've ever had. I believe you'll end up enjoying the lemonade that you got uh, and be glad that you got. Look at what he says. The first thing he says, the first directive he gives is found in verse 2. Uh, somebody say count it. Yes, count it. Count it all joy, he says. Count it all joy when you, when you fall into various uh, trials. Uh, count it all joy when you're facing trials of any kind. Consider it joy. Count it all joy. What he's saying to us, brothers and sisters, before you go too far, look at this text because James does not say count it all joy if you have a trial. He says it's not if, it's when. It's not one, it's plural. He says, count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various kinds of trials. All kinds of trials. They, when we know, brothers and sisters, there are all kinds of trials that some of us are dealing with or had to deal with in our lives. We've had uh, 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 trials coming and going, all facets of, uh, of trials. We've had physical trials. We've had emotional trials. We've had spiritual trials. We've had transportational trials. We've had uh, educational trials, social trials. We've had psychological trials. We've had uh, uh, mental and financial trials. We've had legal trials. We've had breakup trials. We've had makeup trials. We've had raising children trials. We had uh, 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 helping the sick trials. We had helping the elderly trials. We, we had all kinds of trials. We had being lonely trials. We had being single trials. We had being married trials. We had divorce trials. We've had all kinds of trials as a people and the Bible helps us to understand that if you want to turn your lemon into lemonade you got to start with this count it all joy uh, when you come across these trials how can you find a joy in these trials well first you've got to understand that Jesus himself said in John 16 that in this life you'll have some tribulations in this world you'll have tribulations but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world we must understand that when we go through some things in life, when the devil brings things in our lives uh, to try us, to test us, when the devil come, brings things in our lives to tempt us, we must understand his attacks against us is not truly about us. It's about getting to Jesus. See, he comes to the believer to bring us down, to show the Lord that we don't have faith, to show the Lord that we're not faithful. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so we must understand that, that, that when the devil comes your way, when he sends attack after attack, you need to understand that you can count it all joy. He's coming to you, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. And the Bible says, if you suffer for righteousness sake, then you are blessed. And so, brothers and sisters, when the enemy brings trials our way, when the Lord allows them to come our way, we must understand that we can count it all joy because it means that the Lord, we're on the Lord's side. It means that God is with us. It means that God is looking to bless us. He says, count it all joy. Whether it's sickness whether it's an accident in your life, whether, whether it's a big disappointment, you didn't get the test, you didn't pass the test, you, you had a miscarriage, what, whatever it is, count it all joy. Because why? The Lord will bring you through it. No, the Lord 
can and will bring you through. The Lord is with you. Count it all joy. You're not in it by yourself. Count it all joy that when you, uh, if God before you, who can be against you? Count it all joy that what you're going through, you're not going through alone. And you're not going through it because of you. You're going through it because of him. Count it all joy. Whatever you're facing right now, count it joy. Trials that come as believers, he told us in the Bible that, 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 that listen, we would be hated in this world because they hated him. He helps us to understand that Satan fights us and the world opposes us because of who we're with. He told us we can expect trials, we can expect tribulations in this life. The Lord tells us that, but still count it all joy, because lo, I'm with you always. Count it all joy, because I'll bring you through this as well. Count it all joy. If you suffer for my sake, for righteousness sake, you are blessed. Count it all joy. Brothers and sisters, we must count it all joy when we're going through difficult times, because we know we're not going through it alone. It, it reminds me, get this, uh, have you ever, I, I, I've had this experience, I, I've been out sometimes uh, and not fully aware of what I'm wearing and from time to time I'll have on a team uh, baseball cap or, or, or jersey or something, particularly a cap, and this particular time I had a, a, a cap on and, uh, and I came across uh, somebody who, who out of nowhere just said something like, y'all suck. And I was like, who, who, who are you talking to? <laughs> He don't know me. And then he went on to say something else that was clearly directed towards me. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know this fool from, from, from left to right. I don't know, I don't know who he is. Or I've never met him before, but yet he is offended by my presence and got something to say about what I'm wearing. And so I thought to myself, oh, it's because I'm on this, I'm for this team. He's against my team. He doesn't know me. He's just offended by my team. And so brothers and sisters, what happens is when you become, when you wear the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ, when, you're, when, when, you, when your garb is covered with his blood, you're on his team. So there are going to be some people who hate you because of the team you're on. There are going to be some people who come against you because of the team you're on. They don't know you from Adam or Eve. But they're coming against you because you're on the Lord's side and the Lord is on your side. So count it all joy when they come against you, when trials come your way because you're trying to live right. When trials come your way because you're trying to be right. When trials come your way because you're trying to live right. Count it all joy. Because that means not only uh, 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 if the Lord is on your side, but that means you're on the Lord's side. And so count it all joy. Just, if they hate you because of the team you own, count it all joy. Because I just smiled at the brother. I, I laughed at him because I had to remind him that we've got more titles than y'all got. Uh, just by the way, just got more championships than y'all have. But, but you just keep on talking. So brothers and sisters, what I'm saying to you, while you're going through your trials in life, while you're dealing with the limits in your life, count it all joy. You're not alone. They come into our lives and they come as believers because of whose we are. And know that if God be for us, who can stand against us? The second uh, 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 directive uh, James gives in this text is found in verse 3. It's know it. Somebody say know it. Know it. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Because you know the testing of your face produces endurance. What he's saying is that when you're dealing with trials, when life gives you limits, you got to know it's just a test. You got to know it's a test, a test of your faith and your faithfulness. Whatever you're dealing with right now, whatever you're struck, I don't care if it's work related, uh, I don't care if it's uh, marriage related, whatever you're going, sickness, whatever it is, it's just a test of our faith. And a test of our faithfulness. 
And so we got to know, we got to know it's a test, a test that's designed to produce something good. You got to know it's a test, and you got to know that it's a test designed to produce something good in your life. It's designed to produce patience. Some tests are designed to produce endurance. And some tests are designed to make you stronger. Some tests are designed to make you wiser. Sometimes you have to get your heart broken to get a discerning spirit. So now when the devil shows up, you can identify him or her because you've had your heart broken by somebody who meant you no harm. Sometimes the trial is to meant, the trial is just a test. And the test is to make you better. It's the test is to produce something good. The test is designed and intended to produce something good in our lives that the Lord wants to bring forth in our lives. And we've got to understand that that's that God, God is saying to us, I, I want you to know that it's a test. And I want you to pass the test. I didn't give you the test so you can fail it. I gave it to you so you can pass it. So you got, listen, when you realize it's a test of your faith and a test of your faithfulness, when hardship comes, when difficulty comes, when life gives you lemon, then you make up your mind to be more determined to have more faith in God. Put more faith in him. If you're unemployed, trust him more. If you get sick, trust him more. It, whatever you're facing, just trust him even the more. And then do what he said. Even, obedience even unto the point of death. Just do what the Lord have you to do. No, you got to count it and you got to know it. Know that the Lord allows these tests to bring something good. Our test is to bring out his best. Our test is to bring out his best in our lives. It's not, listen, our, our trials is to test our faith. It is to test our faithfulness. Uh, it, it is something he wants us to take us through so something better can come out of it. You know, the, 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 when, when gold is made, uh, they, they dig it out of the earth. And when they dig it out of the earth, they get the gold. But before they get to the purest of gold, they got to put the gold in a, in a hot fire, in a melting pot to melt the gold. The fire purifies the gold, and when it burns off all of the uh, all, all, all the uh, all of the debris, when it burns off all of the unwanted material, what's left is pure gold. And what God is doing, He allows the trials uh, to test our faith and to test our faithfulness, so that He can produce some gold in our lives. See, the training that He takes us through is designed to make us stronger and wiser. And when you know this, when you know this trial is to make you stronger, when you know this trial is to produce something good in your life, then you can make lemonade out of that. You realize even though it takes bitter, you can sweeten it with knowing that the Lord loves you enough to bring even more goodness out of your life. You can, you can make lemons out of this lemonade when you look at how not only knowing that he loves you, but that he's with you. We can make lemonade out of lemons in our lives. See, we can have joy in the midst of our trials when we know that God is going to work it for our good. When we've seen in the past, I don't know about you, but I can look back over my life and see some of the most difficult times in my life produce some of the best things in my life. Hardship and heartache can bring you the love of your life. Uh, bankruptcy and, and financial brokenness can bring you to prosperity and wealth in your life. See, God has a way of bringing to us the, that which he desires for us. But what happens is he has a process to take us through to get there. And testing our faith and our faithfulness is a part of the process. So not only must you count it, you must know it. The second, the third thing is, the th third directive in this text is found in verse 4. Somebody say, let it. Let it. Verse 4 says, but let patience have its perfect work, uh, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. He says in verse 4, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. See, uh, the trial is supposed to produce something good. 
And what God wants to know, wants you to understand is we've got to let it do what it does. We've got to let the process, we've got to let the good come forth. We've got to let the good come out that he is looking for. We've got to let it happen. But the problem we have, we don't like to sacrifice it. We don't like to suffer for very long. And we don't like to deal hardship for very long. So we try to get out of it as quickly as possible. Instead of enduring it, instead of dealing with it, instead of making lemonade, we're just trying to get out of it as soon as possible. And sometimes we miss the blessing that God intended. Sometimes we go uh, 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 a way that he does not uh, 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 direct us and we end up getting out of it, but we end up missing out of it. We miss what God wanted to develop in us. Uh, I, I'm, I'm mindful that uh, from time to time uh, we've seen where uh, people have been, uh, God has been trying to deal with some people and bring change in their lives, but some other people keep coming in and rescuing them. Uh, no matter what. And after a while, God is saying, I'm trying to help this boy. I'm trying to help this girl. But you keep coming in and interrupting the process. And all you're doing is delaying their development because the lesson is repeated until it is learned. They're going to get this lesson uh, uh, eventually. Now, you can keep doing what you're doing. You're just delaying it. But the more you delay it, the more difficulty it become for them. So sometimes God is saying for us, sometimes we're trying to get out of it too soon. We're trying to get out of a marriage too soon. We're trying to get out of a relationship too soon. We're trying to get out of a job too soon. We're trying to get out, we're trying to get out of suffering too soon. We're trying to get out of the situation too soon. And we miss the good that God intended. So you got to let it be. It's just let it let it happen. Let it come forth so that you can get what God intended. And you won't lack the good thing that he wants in your life. Let it. When you start letting the process come forward, when you start letting God do the work inside of you, uh, you'll find the good coming forth out of your life. Let it. The Bible helps us to understand that verse. Let, just, just let it. Just let it come forth and produce the good that God intended. Let it produce the good that God intended. We just so often want everything fast. We want everything good fast. We want everything bad gone fast. But just like some things are better when they're slowly made, like a good cake, a good soul food meal, a stew, some things are better made slowly. And as well, some things are better learned slowly. That when we go through the process, some bad things linger long enough for us to get it this time. You got in it before, you got out of it real fast. You got in it before, you got out of it real fast. Now this time, it takes longer. And this is the time you won't go back because it produced the good that God intended. When the good comes forth, God will be glorified. You and I will be edified. We've got to come to understand God wants us to let the, let the trial bring forth the test that will bring forth the good that he seeks to bring out of our lives. Our test will bring out his best in our lives. So don't run from every test. Don't run from what God is trying to produce in your life. It is his desire to bring the good. Now, James says this, listen, count it, know it, let it, and then he says, and then ask God. I love this verse because it's found in, in, in verse, uh, I believe, verse 5. He helps us to understand verse 5 through 8. He says, uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously, liberally. And without finding fault, without reproach. If anybody lacks the wisdom, wisdom is an interesting thing. This is godly wisdom. Ask God for wisdom because wisdom is having the knowledge and understanding to recognize the best course of action. Wisdom is the knowledge and understanding to recognize what one should say and do and have the desire and the courage to say and do it. See, he's saying, if you don't know how to make this into lemonade, ask me. 
In fact, if you don't feel like making lemonade, ask me how to get over your feelings. Ask me because I'll give you wisdom so that you'll have the knowledge and understanding on, on how to recognize what you should do in this situation and how you should handle this situation because many times we don't ask God uh, for what, how, how to handle it and so we end up handling it in our own way and our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts because he's God himself and so we need that when you're dealing with trials in your life you must understand the best person to ask is God himself. He will tell you how to deal with this child. He will tell you how to pass the test. He he will tell you how to walk in faith. He will tell you how to show your faithfulness. He tells us, ask God. Ask God to help you. Ask God for what you're lacking in, in, in turning this lemon into lemonade. God, I, 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 I don't think I can deal with it. Just ask him. I promise you he will answer. He says, if you ask in faith, though, you got to ask and believe that God is going to give you the answers. He's going to order your footsteps. He's going to tell you how to handle your trials, how to turn them from trials into triumph. He will tell you how to make lemon out of your lemonade. But you've got to ask him in faith. Believe that what that means is you believe God's got the answer. You believe that God has a way. You believe that he will make a way out of no way. You believe that he will give you what you need to make it through. You believe that he's with you. You believe that you can ask him and that he will answer. Brothers and sisters, all I'm saying is, listen, everybody has trials, even right now. And I'm just believing, looking at this, uh, look, listening to the news and seeing what's happening in this world and in this nation, that more trials are likely to come. But you and I who have the Lord you and I who've been born again and have the blood-stained banner of Christ upon our, across our shoulders, we, no matter what the trial that comes, we know it's a test. And we must make our minds up to show God that we trust him, to show God that we have faith in him, to show God that we are faithful even unto death. Brothers and sisters, if you know someone who's going through trials, Please let them know they're not alone, that you love to share some of the lemons you've had in your life, but lemons are personal. They're not always to be shared, that we must deal with the trials and tribulations we are given, and we must recognize they're our tests. My test is not your test. Your test is not my test, but we all shall be tested, and we are tested our test is to bring out God's best. And if you allow it to work through, God will make you, listen, I'm telling you, uh, he will make you stronger, wiser, more prosperous, more healthy. He will give you more, show you more love, more, more kindness. He, he will show you the best and he will bring out the best in all of us. I preach this to those who have Christ that those who have received the gift of salvation through Jesus, to remind you that, listen, uh, you can turn these trials into triumphs. You can turn your lemons into lemonade. And you're not alone because we know that on a hill called Calvary, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. The Bible tells us he was wounded for our transgressions. He didn't deserve it. He, he, he didn't deserve the suffering. He didn't deserve uh, the punishment. He, did. he was just given those lemons. And he made lemonade. That to this day, you and I all, we all get to enjoy from what he made. For it's by his blood, the shedding of his blood, that we have the forgiveness of our sins. It is by his stripes we are healed and can have a whole relationship with our God. If he suffered, if he dealt with the trials of his time, as believers, we must understand the same father he called upon, the same power he drew upon, the same uh, spirit that he has, he has left it with us. That no matter what trials we face, if we face it as James is suggested, 
we too can come out better and not bitter, stronger and not strained and stressed, blessed because we pass the test. If you're not saved, if you have not received the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, if you have not acknowledged your sins, then brothers and sisters who are listening, I want to encourage you to make a decision. You too can be saved. The Lord can show you how to turn your lemons into lemonade. But you first got to get in a relationship with Christ. For the Lord said, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so we must, for those who are unsaved, I want you, if you are listening, I want to encourage you to pray and ask God for forgiveness of your sins. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Confess that you have been a sinner and you desire to be different. You desire to be saved. For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. He says, if you ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive. So if you want a clean palate, if you want to start anew, today is the day you can do it. Bow with me. God, our Father, we thank you for all who are listening. We thank you for all who are already saved. We pray, God, that this message would encourage them that this too shall pass and that there's good to come out of these trials and there's lemonade to be made from the lemons they have been given. But God, those who have not accepted your son, I pray to this day that someone would desire to me have a right relationship with you that starts with Christ. I pray that they would pray that Christ would come into their heart and, and become their Lord and Savior and that they would seek a place of worship. They would seek a place to study the word of God, seek a place to, pre, to be equipped with the word to live the life that he died for in us all. Bless now all who are listening. Bless us out as we go forward. Let us all be mindful that our trials, in our trials, with Christ we can all triumph. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.